YouTube, it's Rod Phillips. We got the Viper 90. Oh yeah. This thing is sweet. Look at these landing gear, trailing edge on all three. Really solid. It just feels great. The nose comes off like before, got flaps, got LEDs. We have another belly light on there. This thing is gonna be amazing. Today we are flying on 7006S30C and we have it positioned right there. We don't know if that's gonna work great or not, but the AR637TA is in here. We have thrust reverse on the 90. This thing will basically hammerhead, but I don't wanna waste the juice. You can see it in the build video. So without further ado, I'm sure this thing would be totally fine in the grass, but we're gonna just start from off the edge of the runway and that's gonna give us the best crack at success. The camera crew is ready, are you ready? Yep. Take off flaps deployed. We are ready to go. Oh my goodness, that got off the ground so fast. That was crazy. Gear retracting out of the throttle. That thing has so much power, it's awesome. Oh man. I'm out of flaps. Okay. Full speed pass, you good? Mm -hmm. Not even one click of trim. Oh my goodness, I am loving this plane, guys. It flies so solid. You hear it scream. Listen to it scream. <laughs> oh, yes! I don't want to say it's got unlimited vertical, but it's pretty darn close. You good? Mm-hmm. Oh man, that thing feels so solid. Okay, here we go. You good? Mm -hmm. Down the runway. By the way, it is not dead calm, but man, that thing covers some ground, doesn't it? Oh, it's way up there. We're gonna really be taxing our camera crew on this one. Man, the throttle gets in there right away. It's almost like a prop plane, it's so fast. Okay, here we go. Going to the low point here. That is just crazy. Loving it, guys. It rolls fast. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Let's slow it down. I love the scream. Love the scream. Love the scream. We're going under the power lines. You good? Look how slow it is. That's is so good. Oh, I'm so amazed. It was going 120 miles an hour ago just a few seconds ago. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. We're going under the power lines. It's a bigger plane than the little brother, 70. Going inside. Man, that thing is just so easy to fly. I can't hardly believe it. Okay, 7006S in this plane. You don't even know it's there. Full throttle pass. Oh man. Oh man, I just love it. Here we go, full throttle. Oh, it rolls everything you want it to do. It just does it like right now. Good rudder authority. I feel like it's wiggling a little bit on me, but that's okay. Oh, we have safe too. Here's safe, just turned it on. Limited bank angle right, full up. Get out of safe. Here we go. Guys, why would you be flying this plane in safe is all I got to say. Full throttle, here we go. Right in front. Oh guys, I can't say how much I love flying this thing. Man. Oh shoot, that's our timer, okay. We're gonna get into position. We're gonna go a little bit hokey this time. So let's try this way. We're gonna go up over the top. I think we're good on power. Take off flaps. Gear coming out. Landing flaps. We're way out there. You see, it's just super easy control. Camera crew out by the edge, please. Thank you, perfect. Okay, I can get to the thrust reverse, no problem where I am. I'm so 
Lucky. <laughs> Out of the gear. That was the world's luckiest bounce. I did not pull the switch all the way back. I only pulled it halfway. Maybe I shouldn't have done that mixing. Mm, I about that. Oh man, guys, the stress balls are in my throat. Gear coming down. Call them when you see them. Mm -hmm. About 10% throttle there. Over the tree line. She lived. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed about that landing. The whole series of landings. But not for not. 25% uh, power left. We're at 20.8 on the volts. Oh my goodness, we are totally redoing this and it's gonna be awesome, guys. Stay tuned, 7,000 success. Absolutely no problems on the weight. I'm loving the way it flies. I apologize for my terrible landing attempts. I don't know what the heck was going on there. I think what happened was I programmed in this middle step to not take any action on the reverse thrust and I needed it all the way back, which is what I thought I had done when I gave it that burst of reverse that was not reverse. And then I'm like, oh crap, I'm flying. There, there you have it. I got so lucky on that first landing that I didn't just bite it. I was this close to destroying this beauty. And by the way, you may have noticed it rolled out in the grass, just no problem. Uh, since we have battery, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to try reverse thrust, but we're not going to do it on the grass, okay? So I'm out of the flaps. I want to preserve stuff out of the reverse thrust. We're going to go ahead and full up elevator. Just be real gentle and nice to my landing gear. I am taxiing on grass. There is a bit of a bump here, and then we're onto the sod. The sod is pretty well manicured. That stuff out there is rough. And just looking, that thing is awesome. Okay, going at an angle. Ooh, it's a little hard on the nose gear. But look at this, guys. Oh, that is just amazing. That's about 20% throttle there. Guys, I love, love, love the way that this plane flies. It is so easy to fly. I'm just getting my nerves about me is why those landings suck. I guarantee you in a couple more flights, this thing is gonna be going down the runway. Let's see if we can get exactly in position where we started from. That is just so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Oh, I wanna take off so bad, but I'm not gonna do it because my camera crew will literally murder me. Throttle cuts on. So, couple thoughts. One, I didn't even put one, one click of trim, not even one. There's nothing, nothing for trim, nothing. That plane was so well behaved. The only thing I wasn't crazy about was a little bit of wobble and you can't tell it because this is what I would call a light confused wind, meaning it's going this way. Earlier it was going this way. At one point during the flight, it was going this way. It's very light. You're not gonna see it. Even in the tips of the trees, you won't see it. Mm -hmm. See, just a little bit. If you zoom just enough, you can see what I'm talking about. It's just that like relaxed, light breeze, but it's changing directions. That's probably what we're seeing. Now, I also noticed the oscillation on the 70, but it was a little bit less pronounced. This thing goes fast. It covers a lot of ground. But yes, you can absolutely land it on this runway, which is short. And yes, the F-16 barely does the trick on this runway. We pretty much have to go to the road, which is 1,220 beautiful feet of runway, and it likes about 800 of it. Mm -hmm. So this thing doesn't gobble up the runway near as bad as you might think. And did you notice how quick it got off the ground? Yeah. That's supposed to be a 15 foot wide pro or 15 foot turnaround, but it's more like 30 because the guy was really good to me who did my concrete and he didn't include the sweep, which I don't know why he must not, you know, want to make a lot of profit. But anyway, I had that thing rolled just beyond. So 37 plus 15 plus 10, let's call it. So I would say about 50 to 60 feet, that thing was rolling. And I mean, legit roll. Yep. It wasn't like I was forcing it. It was just a good, clean, crisp roll. Now, that being said, I could take off and force the issue under the power lines, but it just kind of looks better if you do a climb out. Um, love the amount of power. It's definitely not lacking on power. This thing has power. It will do it, and it will do it right when you tell it to. The thrust reverser, just to show you, throttle cuts off. 50% throttle. 
thrust reverse. By the way, if you guys aren't used to using thrust reverse, one of the first planes that came stock for me that had thrust reverse would have been the Draco. I know there's been a few. I, I know that we had like the Night Timber X would have had thrust reverse. I believe the, the Ultimate 3D had thrust reverse. It still takes a little bit of getting used to because it's just not something we're used to doing. Um, also, I have some thoughts on how I wanna do this and I don't know if I'm gonna mix in some different throttle curves to possibly accomplish some better results on the throttle management on landing but I really, really like the concept and I think I'm gonna play with it and really get it down. For now, we're gonna do another flight. I think we wanna try this on 5006S, 50C this time. Yes, you can use two of them in parallel. I think accomplishing the CG will be very doable. We actually have this thing balanced on the back position, which is right here. There's seven millimeters forward or backward from 10 from the back of this plastic okay so we actually have it balanced just a little bit tail heavy here and then obviously a lot tail heavy there and we got very good roll we had no problems getting that flare in there i feel like a good flare and you wouldn't need the thrust reverse but you would need probably a little bit longer runway very happy with the performance guys we're going to reset and come right back with the 5000 youtube it is here it had a long, arduous journey from somewhere on the other side of the planet. And we finally have it. You've already seen it fly and I'm sure it was amazing. I hope it was, cause it better be. Oh yeah, baby, look at that beauty right there. The 90 millimeter EDF with smart technology. It is the Viper. Beautiful Viper 90, red, gray, white, just like its small brother, the 70 millimeter, which is awesome. We have now the 90 millimeter. This is super exciting for me. I love, I love the concept of the jet being a 90. It is my first 90 millimeter EDF. Obviously we're working our way through the ranks. This thing boasts all sorts of cool features. It's got all the smart features, telemetry, all that good jazz and an avian ESC, which of course is smart. And what does that do for us, camera crew? Gives us all of the telemetry. But also it gives us the ability to do reverse thrust. Oh yes. Which is going to be awesome. Something that we are gonna also do on our 80 millimeter F-16 because evidently it does have some positive impact. And uh, I have a piece of tape that's underneath the whole thing. What the heck is going on with that? That's go. weird. Um, okay, so. Large scale jet for intermediate to experienced pilots. My understanding is that this plane flies better in terms of better and slightly easier than its little brother. Also, it has LEDs, which is a big deal because its little brother does not have LEDs. You can fly it with different battery configurations than you could fly its little brother or sister, whatever you want to call that. And uh, I am super excited to see it. Incredible performance. You can get this as a bind and fly basic or an ARF plus. An ARF plus is gonna come with basically the power unit, the um, fan and the ESC, but not the servos and stuff, which I think bind and fly is the way to go guys. And if you're a new pilot and you're wanting to get this plane, please do me a huge favor and just buy the bind and fly. It's a great value compared to the RF Plus. In my opinion, the only reason you'd get an RF Plus is if you crashed your plane and you're trying to fix it. That'd be a great reason to do that. Or if you had another 90 that you crashed and you wanted to basically just take all the goodies out of the other one, that's one reason why that would make really good sense. But again, this is why I'm telling you because I get a lot of new pilots on this channel that are just learning kind of the ropes. First of all, this might be a little bit much but it's actually a good flying plane. You know, Horizon boasts that this is a great, a great first plane. A couple things to keep in mind, this thing doesn't do great in grass. Yes, if you have super well manicured grass, you can totally do it all day long. But one of the weakest links on the 70 is the landing gear. Now we've upgraded to some squishy tires, which made a big improvement. It was kind of a pain to put them on. And I would get a smaller front tire. These are two inches. I'd get a smaller one and I love, absolutely love flying this plane. It is one of my favorite planes to fly. 
but it also takes quite a bit of work to get this plane to work with some of the bigger batteries, okay? Because the batteries have to be pushed so far back to get the CG tail, tail heavy enough to allow you to flare on landing. And I still struggle to flare that thing on landing. This plane's supposed to be way better on that. And also we fly off of a fairly short runway. So when we fly, we basically fly with, you know, we're needing arrestor cables to slow us down, okay? And that's just because our runway's short. My hope is the gear will be a lot stronger on this and everything I've been told is that the gear are way better on this. Um, this is an early release. So if you wanna order it for yourself, I believe you can actually get it pretty much right away. Um, and that being because there were some shipping delays to the North American reviewers. Oh yeah, look at that. See the wing? It doesn't even look that much bigger, does it now? Which to be perfectly frank, I don't need a plane to be gigantic. I just want it to be powerful. I want it to have strong retracts. Look at this. Oleos, that is so cool. I want to open them so bad. You can take it apart. Feels like the wheels are super hard. That's probably not great. Uh, flaps, Fowler flaps. See, as they separate, they come down into hinge down here. Really high quality. Everything is painted with an opaque paint, so I can't show you the spars. But I can tell you this thing is rigid. It's very stiff, so that's great. The wings on this are a little bit less stiff. Looks like we might have bearings in the wheels. Yeah, there are bearings in there. You see the bearing right there? That's a ball bearing. So that means those things are gonna spin free. Now, normally I would almost complain about that, but because we have the capability of doing an effective thrust reversing, it's gonna be cool because it'll get up to speed quick and it'll roll quick. So if you're running from a short runway, you can come in, land, reverse thrust, slow it down quickly, and then get, get it stopped. Quicker, beautiful. Beautiful horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Paint job's really clean. I like the red. Beautiful overlapped hinge, look at that. Three finger hinges here, we can show you this one. It's got exactly the same livery except red. And I actually, I, I like blue, but I like red better for an airplane because it stands out against the sky mm -hmm. easier. Um, I do like this camo. It's a cool finish. Lots of lights on this plane. I'm very excited to see them. Curious to see how they're going to handle this because as you know, there's going to be winglets and look how they snap in. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Really excited to see this ball bearings. Okay. So it looks like this is stacked top and bottom on this one. So as I'm pulling pieces out, everything packs into one side and then packs in from the other side. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at this. Look at that tight. Everything's cupped in there. Oh, it's so cool. It looks like it's all one piece of foam, but it's not. That is so cool. Really excited to see this. Aircraft Studio Design. Worked with Horizon on this one. So you can always tell when they got the big dollars in the planes because they're always really good flying planes. And this one is no exception. I'm really excited. I hate it when I have to say that before I've actually flown it, but I just can't imagine this thing being anything other than amazing. Um, and the reason being is because I've had, I've had other Vipers and I love them. They're so much fun. Um, if it weren't for the fact that it was so big and 90 millimeter EDF and expensive batteries, this is definitely not a first plane, but the thing is, it would not be out of the realm of possibility to be like your second or third EDF, in my opinion. And I know some of you guys are probably kicking yourself thinking, well, I want it as my first EDF. Well, maybe you can handle it if you have a big enough runway. Okay, so this is, this is gonna unload from the middle. So you gotta cut the top or the bottom, whichever side you kind of flip upright. And then I'm gonna put it back on its belly so I don't have parts flop out on the counter and get damaged. Horizon always does a, a really good job of packaging. I know it sounds kind of like a lame thing to bring up, but really this is an unboxing. After all, you know, we've had planes that have been damaged. Very few have been Horizon planes. You gotta cut your middle tape. Oh shoot, thank you. I didn't notice there was a middle tape too. 
The other thing is, shipping worldwide has been a pain this year. Oh, yes. Oh, it looks so good. I don't know why I didn't put my box in the background. I need to put the box in the background so that people can look over my shoulder and compare notes. Guys, I'm just, the new lineup of planes has been phenomenal. A lot of the problems, oh, by the way, I didn't mention this yet, 5050C, 5050C Gen 2, you can fly two of those, okay? They're gonna be in parallel. This is not a 12S plane, this is a, this is a 6S plane, okay? 5030C, 7,000, bottom fins, beautiful. Really high quality. This is one of the things I'm loving about the way planes, planes are coming to us now. Plastic holding on to a wide bite, okay? But then feel that foam. That foam is sturdy and this is plastic. Oh yes, that is all plastic. And look at the match on colors. See that? That's something we weren't getting just as soon as uh, I would say a year, a year and a half ago. We weren't mm -hmm. getting stuff like that. The plastic would be like cartoony colored and it would not match. But look how nice that is. And not only that, what hits the ground? The plastic. Right yeah. there. Right there. And you want to know how I know that? <laughs> Do I have scratches? Um, yep, look yeah. at the tail. Yeah. So now I'm not saying that that's not an unsurmountable issue. I mean, obviously you can overcome that. You can touch it up. You can avoid dragging your tail. But at the same time, just these planes are coming and they're so well done that you just don't have to do anything. You get spoiled when you work with Horizon planes like this. Because we work with a lot of other companies too right now. Well, not a lot of other companies, but enough other companies that we realize there's an actual value added. The nut sack, bolt sack. It was stuck to the nose cone, that's cool. <laughs> the nose cone is long, plastic, hard plastic. That is very helpful. I appreciate you doing that, Horizon. Because here's the thing, even though I feel like this is a, a good protected tip too, it's the exact same plastic tip, by the way. Actually, this one's smaller. The thing is, if you crash this tip, you're screwed. You know, you're pretty much looking at a new fuselage unless you wanna just look at ugly for a while. Now, I've done the ugly for a while and it's fine. What the heck is going on here? That's so weird. Did they add another carbon fiber spar or am I supposed to separate those? Because there's a carbon fiber tube inside of a fiberglass tube. Oh, I know that's packaging. I don't know if that's gonna be added together or if it's just for extra strength. You know what I bet it is? We probably have two wing joiners. Yeah, we have two spars. Hmm. One here, one here. Yeah. One's fiberglass, one's carbon fiber. Guys, we're just getting these planes to where they're super stiff. And believe me, you want a stiff airframe because that's how you can do your 120 mile an hour planes and uh, not have problems. Love it. Oh. Look at that. That is so cool. I'm just loving the way that that goes together. I can't wait to show you. It looks so cool. It looks like a little submarine or something. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> really excited. now. The other thing that's nice about this is that when you have a tricycle landing gear on an aircraft, uh, especially an aircraft like this, the Viper has a long wheelbase. So you don't have a lot of problems with it. Like the F-16 likes to topple over like this. I almost never have the Viper jet do that, okay? Which is weird. I'm not sure why that is. It's probably just because the wheels are so far apart from one another and I love that. That makes it a little easier to land. But if you get one like the F-16, the wheel's like down here, okay? and then the wheels are here, so it just doesn't have much, so it tips easy. The F-18 is horrendously easy to tip, and those back gear, they, they go like this, and so as you tip, then that wheel keeps going down, and it'll allow itself to run into ground, and the missile rails rip off really easy. F-16, 80 millimeter protects itself really well. The F-16, 70, they both like to tip over really easy. So, okay, loving this, oh, come on. Whoever's job it is to put manuals into this box, that is ridiculous. I don't like seeing manuals folded. That, that, it's like do not fold from the postal service. That ticks me off. <laughs> How can you be mad with a, such a beautiful plane though? Look at this thing. Wow. Wow. Oh, look at the pilot. He's stashing it up and everything. You see the stash? Wait, hold on. Oh. Well, you didn't have to get like an extreme close-up. You can see from a mile away. Yeah, he's all stashed up. 
Like the instruments, they seem like an appropriate size. Very cool. Ooh, there's an anti-crash beacon on the top. Very good, hope, it, hope it's flashing. The thrust tube is kind of plain looking. That's a little bit of a disappointment. But it's plastic. But it's plastic, so you can drag it. Nice. By the way, if you drag your plastic tip and you get scrape marks, since this is not painted, it's molded that color, mm -hmm. you can take heat to it and melts it back, which is really nice. Not a lot, because you'll melt the whole thing and deflect the shape, deform the shape. Man, look at the belly on this thing. Absolutely gorgeous, easy, accessible. Looks like a two millimeter probably, or 1.5, not sure which one. Nose gear covers. Guys, look, there's a little bump for the nose gear wheel. <laughs> it's so cool. This one, a little bit ugly with the nose gear sticks down. That's why the, the wheel sticks out. So that's why I say if you can get yourself a little bit smaller one, I think they make a 1.75 inch as well. That would go all the way into the wheel well. Very cool looking. So. Let's, let's just talk for a minute because I know some of you are thinking, Brian, simplicity, simplicity equals reliability. I agree. But sometimes you just gotta go all out and make this thing awesome. And I think that's what Horizon has done here. This E-Flight plane is awesome. Let's see how the canopy works. Please work good. Oh yeah, there's good, feel how smooth that is. It's like butter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this does come equipped with an AR637TA. Look at all that goop. Oh, it's mounted on a plastic shelf. Nope, it's PVC. PVC, which is plastic still technically. That's nice. It's strong and sturdy and it's easy to get to. And guess what? You can stuff your battery back all the way. That's super nice. Look at the landing gear. That is beautiful, loving it. Double, it's got the wishbone that goes on either side. That's nice. We got Velcro mounted here. Heavy duty straps, not those sloppy junky ones. Look at that. See that? Super heavy duty straps. That's what I like to see. And look, both hands inside the canopy. Yeah. That is a big factor. Now that's what you get with a little extra size. Big carbon fiber square tubes. Yeah. Good lordy lord. Look at this guys. Okay, that's like no deflection. If I did that to that plane, it would break off. Oh, and by the way, look at this. We have a capacitor in series. Look at that, that is good. We finally have a capacitor for the stabilizer. I'm loving it. 10 volts, 1000 microfarads, okay? This is a bind plug. Looks like they just took an extension cord and then they went to a Y cable. You could actually eliminate this Y cable and then all you have to do is just get this plug back in at any point and then you can uh, go ahead. What this does is this is, this is, okay, if you don't know what a capacitor is, a capacitor stores charge, similar to, but not the same as a battery. It stores charge, so uh, say it's, it's, uh, you're at zero volts and then you energize the circuit with a 10 volt, um, well, it's not gonna be a 10 volt battery, like a 26 volt battery, so it brings it to 10 volts, okay? You de-energize the circuit, it's gonna slowly drop off, okay? Similar to a battery. But the key is what's gonna happen is this is gonna help prevent brownouts on your receiver. It's also gonna help with spikes too, but in this case, you know, you're not gonna have that. Because even if you run at the full, I think it's like seven point something volts, I don't know what they've got the BEC set to on this Avian ESC, which by the way, you can change that, and that changes the speed by which your servos work. So it's like five volts, seven volts. There's also like a six point something volts, and it will change how fast your servos work. But keep in mind, with higher voltage, those little brushed motors or brushless and some extremely expensive servos will actually get hotter. You need to be aware of that. Most of the stuff we work with is all gonna be brushed, uh, brushed motors, just junky little motors in the servos. Um, okay, so that's really cool. And also look at this. This is something I haven't seen Horizon do before. Diversity positioning, wow, I'm loving it. They put the actual antenna in a diversity configuration. See this? 90 degrees of each other. Yeah, baby. Yes, yes, so glad. Finally, they're thinking of all these little details that I have to think of as an unboxer, okay? They're also labeled for us. Guys, look at this. If you manage to stick your hand in that prop, you get the Darwin Award, okay? 
because you are gonna have to work really hard to stick your hand all the way up in there while you're <laughs> plugging the wire in. It's almost gonna be like birthing a small animal, okay? All right, so without further ado, uh, now that we have insulted people that have very small arms, we are going to pause, get things set up on the plane stand. Maybe we'll separate these tubes while we're off camera because that's gonna be kind of a boring process. You just pull the tape off. Actually, you know what? We didn't show it in the unbox. We probably should by right. Okay, so a little bit off there. Oh yeah, loving it. By the way, do not rub your hand up and down these things. You will regret it, okay? That is beautiful. Resist the urge. This is not near as beautiful as the uh, joiner rod on the Draco, which is like a thing of beauty. Uh, free, cool brand swag, okay? So you can do that, get in there. I think it's a drawing or something, I'm not sure, if you register your product. Now, that being said, um, another thing too, the other day I was pulling an AR631 out of a plane that may or may not have been destroyed by me. Anyway, you'll never hear about it on the channel, except for here. And uh, I, did, I did update the firmware on the 631 using the programming cable, and I went into the menu, into forward programming, and reset the factory defaults, and guess what? I was able to do all the things I wanted. It worked gloriously. I was super excited about it, and no, it was not this plane. You'll just have to keep guessing because I won't ever tell you unless I accidentally say it. But anyway, it worked great. I was super happy that I was able to do that. And I just wanted to remind you guys, if you destroy a plane like this and you want some value out of it because they're, I mean, they're expensive. Let's just make it straight. When you destroy a plane, this is a binding fly. Like this has an AR-631 in it, right? That has an AR-637 TA. They come pre-programmed for the plane in a binding fly configuration, right? So you want to be able to use that on another plane. It is so much easier to set that up into a new plane than it ever was with an AR 636 A or B. The 636 A or B would take hours of screwing around to get to work. These things are so much easier. You pretty much just go in and you may even be able to just reset them to factory defaults if they're new enough. Once you reset them to factory defaults, everything is gone. Now you can download profiles for bind and fly planes and then put them in. I don't get into that, but you can technically do it. Um, and I'm just gonna, since we're talking about it real briefly, I have a cable. I, I collect a lot of different cables, as you may know. This is, this is the programming cable, okay? So I think we've linked to it, but there's your, there's your part number, okay? That's the same thing that they use to update uh, some of the transmitters. And uh, there's different equipment over the years that they have updated, like the DXS, you can actually update those. Uh, the DXS has a little plug right there, that one. And you can buy a little adapter plug, or you could just build one. It's the same pins that are used in a servo connector, but that happens to be the top pin and the bottom pin plugs into the outside pins of this servo wire. So if you're curious, I, I, while I was doing my research, um, also you can assign, if you update the firmware on your DXS, you can assign uh, up to four different profiles in the airplane mode and four different profiles. I don't know if it's simultaneous on the helicopter mode. So I just learned that, so I'm passing it along. When I say I just learned it, that means it's been available for like a year and you guys can go ahead and uh, follow Horizon's got a lot of that stuff on their page. So they're really good at doing these instructional videos. Well, some of you say they're not. I think they're pretty good myself, but they go into the weeds even worse than I do. All right, so we'll pause. We'll get this thing set up on the plane stand and we're gonna do the assembly next. Stay tuned. All right, YouTube. So we are gonna put this thing together. There's some instructions that come with this plane. Uh, there was an addendum that came in ours. I don't know if yours will have the addendum. But anyway, it was pretty easy stuff. I'm just gonna work Disregard through. them. Just, no, the addendum had to do with um, elevator throw. They had like a typo in it, it looks like. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not the major. And then a part list. The rule Correct. of thumb is if you're not 100% sure, plan on getting online and checking, okay? Just download the manual if you're not sure. Especially if it's curled up like that, it's just so annoying. Okay, so I'm putting the wing spar through, and yes, you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, that doesn't seem like the first step, according to the manual. 
Well, it's not. I just want to move the big objects out of the way because it's, I'm tripping over them. And since we put it on a plane stand, then it's going to be nice and easy. Which, by the way, Tom, thanks for sending me this plane stand years and years and years ago. That was quite the fiasco when you did because they screwed it up. The Postal Service had, like, opened the box or something and they lost the doohickeys that go right here. That was very nice of him to do that. I had no idea what I was missing until I have now had it for a few years. That is a beautiful fit. It's pretty Really easy. smooth. Yep. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, so now that wing is allowed to fall off. Normally you'd have your tail built so it'd make it harder to do this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it like that. And then the camera crew and I are gonna grab some screws. They are all the same. Which are all the same and they all are driven by a- Two. Millimeter. Yep. Two millimeter. So I'm gonna put it like over here where all the holes are. Put it on the tip, goes right into a brass fitting. It's not hard to find and it's not hard to line up. You'll notice I'm not crushing the wing together. I'm just kind of slid it together a little bit. Look how easy that was. Oh my goodness. I wish all the planes were that easy. What are we gonna do for the other four hours of this video if we don't have to like? Well, we're gonna start by picking up screws that I dropped. But in the meantime, I'm gonna tighten this one. Camera crew, you realize you're holding a camera. <laughs> they can see, they know what you're doing. Well, yeah, okay, all right. So now I'm gonna flip this plane up. So it's like this. I'm gonna probably just do it this way. We'll just take full advantage of this plane stand. There's such a low piece count on this plane. I know. This is crazy, you could legit be building this plane while the battery was charging, which by the way, I don't know if you guys could hear the Facebook data center over there. Mm -hmm. That was uh, me charging all the numerous, numerous batteries because we have a little event going tomorrow. One of our subscribers is coming. It's gonna be fun. And we wanna have our stuff in order. That is a very tight, tight fit on this box. It's very precision machined. So that back one goes in and then this front one, just having a, trying to figure out, oh, there it goes. Once you get it, it's pretty much golden. Wow. Okay. So that's a really good fit. Nice size. Not anything that's unmanageable, by the way, guys. When you have a plane that's like huge, sometimes it's a prohibitive. You can't use it because it's like hard to get around places. And so, when you have the right size for your application, it's really handy. Okay, so I gotta push in this wing a little bit more. Camera crew, I need to push against this plane. Can you hold right here? Right here, right here. There you go. I just gotta get it started. There we go. Just keep holding where you're holding. Okay, that one's tight. Okay, now let go. Now this one should be a little bit easier. And if you think about it, put a little Dawn dish, to, dish, to, dish soap, not dish detergent, on the tip of your screw if it's hard to get started. See, once I do that, that front one, then I can, you see how hard that is to go? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just take and hold this on so it doesn't drop in the sink. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of, a little bit of Dawn dish soap, just like that. Okay. And that's gonna lubricate the screw as it goes in, hypothetically. Do you hear it's not squealing at all? Mm -hmm. I probably need a little bit more Dawn. Because it's gonna squeal at the end, I bet. Right before it finishes. I usually when that happens. Oh, I mean. So dip the tip in Dawn and you'll be very happy. All right, so sorry, I just hit my mic. Hopefully that wasn't too egregious. Let's go ahead and put the ventral fins on. These are ventral fins. The decorative side goes out, which should be pretty somewhat obvious. There's kind of a slot. Kind of find your slot and then you slide it back. Beautiful. I love it when a good plan comes together. This is just amazing. Look how hard that was. Gosh. 
Guys, I am loving this assembly. It's funny because I know some of you old timers especially that used to balsa build everything. I think you complain a lot about the foam, but let's just be honest guys. I want to fly. Now you might want to build and you can still do that, but look how easy this assembly is. And yes, I realize that there is an appreciation that will be lost on a whole generation of RC pilots for the amount of work that it took to build stuff. But you know what? You can still build stuff. There's nothing being taken away from the beautiful stuff that you guys used to build that, uh, you know, I was with you. I was building a lot of that stuff too. Just I wasn't flying it because I didn't have any way to fly it. Okay, rudder, then elevator, elevator. Okay. So this is rudder, elevator, elevator. I'm not sure exactly how this is supposed to work. How about I try this? I don't, am I supposed to untape that stuff or what? Probably. All right, by the way, you might want to check your cable here. Look at this. My Y cable's pulled out. See that? Snap that in. See this? My Y cable is not all the way snapped. Now it is. Whew, that was a good catch, Brian. Yeah, I'm gonna untape this. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, by the way, too, I was talking to camera crew off of the, uh, when we were cleaning up, and I said, we need to remind the people that sometimes these early samples that we get will have a few like really minor issues that get corrected before you actually see yours when you order them. Um, I'm not saying that we know about something on this model, but if we did, I would, make, I would mention it. I'm just saying that there are occasionally things that get changed or fixed by the time you actually see yours. Okay, I don't know if I, I think I'm probably gonna have to, see here's four screw holes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to untape that too. Okay. Just kind of lining this up. There it is. Man, that is a really good fit. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice fit. It looks like we have two screws we do here and then the last two go in after we put on the top. Yep. Now, the instructions suggest doing, is there one extra by chance? It's possible. Okay. Usually. Because I have one extra still. You're going to have this. three for the vertical. Oh, there's so three? Be a well, then there's no extra. Okay. okay. No extra is always acceptable as long as we get all of them. Now you can tell these go in now because the, the hole is um, countersunk. I love the countersunk holes because it pulls everything exactly where it needs to be instead of being sloppy. Okay, so that tape is no longer needed. This is another good opportunity to verify all your plugs are plugged and make sure they're going the right direction. Brown to brown, brown to brown, brown to brown. Okay, so we're good there. Now there seems to be room down here. So that's great. So that's where those are gonna stow away. And then on the rudder, we're gonna go ahead and Brown is down. See, I know you can't see, but I can see. Brown is down. Make sure it clips and those little fingers hang on. Yeah, you're right. There's three, three screws there, mm -hmm. camera crew. Oh, that is a really, really, really good fit, guys. Just want to make sure I don't. I almost feel like maybe that one was supposed to. Can we go up front with it? I don't know. I actually don't know on that. I can't see real great. Oh, that's fun. Yep, wiggle the tip in first. Yep, that's the way to do it. Get your tip lined up, put it in first. I'm gonna put one right here. Make sure it starts. Guys, this has gotta be like the easiest assembly we've ever had. Well, I shouldn't say that. Up the there. last one we did didn't even have any tools. Remember? Right. Well, it's center gravity. Oh, no, we didn't. Mm -mm. We didn't on that. Okay. That's true. There was nothing on that. No tools. Oh, hey, we're hanging out. 
We're hanging out. Oops. Oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this plane so I need you to move so okay. I can flip, flip it over here. Okay, so I'm just going to this third hole. There's a hole that flanks the vertical stabilizer that goes down through the horizontal stabilizer. And then there's an additional third hole that's up at the front. But if this plane is built. If that's a 10 minute Brian build time. That means it's like a five minute actual build. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe even less, like three minutes. That's crazy. By the way, I don't know if you guys saw this cheater here. It's not a cheater actually, it's just a vent hole. There's a vent hole here that is super cool and it's molded really nicely. That is super cool. So just to be clear, that plane's built. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so let's talk about uh, center gravity marking. We were reading this, let's show the people on the page. It's on page seven in mine. They say, the CG is located 10 millimeters plus or minus seven from the back edge of the plastic wing mounting structure. Where is that? The back edge of the plastic. So I think what they're talking about is this. So they're saying plus or minus, okay, so it's 10 millimeters from the back edge of the front, front plastic wing mounting structure. Yeah. So it's seven, or excuse me, 10 millimeters back from here, plus or minus seven. So it's three. To seven. No, no, it'd be three plus 14, right? Seven times two. Because it's plus or minus seven. So it's, so you, if you start at the first mark, so it's plus or minus seven, okay, which would be 14 millimeters. And you want to go 10 out. So no. come over here and let's Wait. look. <laughs> now you've got me. See why? This is why we don't do math on camera. Because I would have had that no problem. So 10 minus 7 is 3. So you got to go 3 out for the first one. And then you can go 14 to the second no, one. No, because 10 plus 7 would be 17. Right. <laughs> okay. So if you take, if, if you measure out 3, it says the, the minus part yep. is 10 minus 7 is 3. So you go 3. Then from 3, you would go out 14 more. Okay. So 3 then 14. Please just say yes. And you're right. <laughs> okay. Three. So we're going to mark it at three I from agree the with edge. Three. And then we're, okay, so, all right, so let's mark the first one. Yeah. It's three. So I'm going to mark the first one and the second one. Thank you for sending this, Danny. Okay, so three is right here, three millimeters. Okay, so here's three, three enough. Okay, I got that locked down. Oh, geez, that's so close. It's like nothing. Like why we don't even really need to mark it. I hate to do this, guys. I hate doing this with a nice, pretty plane like this, but it just is the way it is. You got to be able to feel the thing. Okay, there's our three millimeter mark. Remember, it's ten minus seven is three. Correct. But from the from the trailing edge. Am I what? Say it. No, you're good. That's okay. So now if you were to add seven, you'd be at 10, correct? Yes. Okay. And then you need to add. And then you'd add seven, seven more, more, which would be 17. 17. So, okay. So, but just to be clear, seven, seven times two is 14 mm -hmm. plus three is 17. Mm -hmm. okay. But you were saying 14. I was saying 14 from the first hole. So yes, you're right. We were both right. Okay, so 17 from the edge. I disagree. <laughs> no, we were both right. It was 14 from, from the, the first hole. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. We're in agreement now. Okay. okay. So 17. Okay, so 17 here. Okay. <sighs> okay. Math. Don't do it on camera. No, don't do it on camera. Don't do it on camera. Nothing good ever comes from it. Well, I mean, some good things come from it. <laughs> like getting the CG marked. Okay, there you go. What I, what was confusing us is the starting and stopping points. Right. Really, because she meant start from here and I meant start from the first hole that we had made. But yeah. she was right. It'd be better. And I know some of you guys are cringing at home saying, oh my goodness, I can't believe you just made that giant hole in your wing. And I said, 
Well, fortunately for you, this is my winging. You don't have to do it that way. Another really good way to do it is take a piece of tape, put it down in the perspective area, and then you can put a drip of CA. Some people like to use push tacks. I've never actually used push tacks, so I'm not gonna recommend you do it because I'm not sure how well it would, like, would it feel good to have a push tack pop out and hit you at 120 miles an hour? I'm not sure. I suppose you could put CA in it and that would prevent it from popping out, right? Yeah. So anyway, I- Somebody said like the little like sticky pads like that you put on the bottom of furniture that are clear, that would stick. Again, you're adding something to it. Right. It's not a bad idea. It's just not maybe what I but think. But you can do whatever you want. You don't have to put That's a right. black you Sharpie can... mark on your plane if you don't the want The reason to. I like this is because I can see it, one. Two, it looks like it matches. It's appropriate. It's not overbearing on the plane. Going 120 miles away from four feet away, you're not gonna be able to see it. That thing looks sweet. Yeah, it does. Okay, so let's compare and contrast real quick the size. It's actually easier to hold the new one, which is weird. Probably because I'm right-handed. Wait, here. You see the difference in size? Nose to nose, baby. It's not a huge difference in size. Okay? This is manageable. This is manageable. That's a really good thing. Because here's here's the thing. I don't want you guys to think if you can't get the 90, just don't get the 70 because I can tell you this, the 70 is awesome. It's very fun. But this has LEDs. It has, um, they both have flaps. They both have good controls. They both have AS3X. They both have safe select if you want it. And I can say that the lights are gonna be a big added value for people that like to fly around twilight, which we do a lot of. Mm -hmm. Also, Thrust reverse is the thing that we need. So if you don't have the budget for this and you maybe you don't have the space, this might be a good option, but you can still add the Avian ESC, which I know is expensive. Or if you have another plane that you crash, it happened to have an Avian, you could possibly swap it out. That'd be one way you could do that. However, I can tell you this, this thing not only looks sweet, oh man, but I'm excited to hear it. I want to hear it, the 90. Okay, so we have the center gravity marked. We're ready for radio setup. So we are going to just jump right into showing you what we're gonna be talking about. And then we'll do, we'll use the NX8, okay? It's been great. Just recently updated the firmware. Haven't had any issues since. We did have to relearn the text entry, which is pretty annoying in my opinion. But at the same time, I don't really care that much. It's, it still works. It's just very clunky in my opinion. Um, 5,000, what does this recommend? Uh, there's a couple of different uh, sizes that are allowed. Okay, they're suggesting a 6S, 4 through 7,000 milliamp hour battery. And you can also do more than one in parallel, which is pretty sweet because the battery bay is huge. So they call out a 5,000. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards seven still myself. I am big on having one pack that fits well, that's easy to install. Now, I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but my plane takes two batteries. There's no way to get around it. I get it. I mean, I'm with you. But here's the thing. If I can stick one in and have a good flight experience, I'm like never going to do two. Never. Yeah. That being said, the EC1500 was one exception to that rule. And I did regularly use two packs at a time because you could just fly it forever and it was very exciting. Okay, so 7,000 looks like this thing's gonna fit really nice. Okay, let's tip this thing. Now, why are we doing this now before radio setup? Because radio setup and center of gravity just seems to happen about the same time. It gets a little intermixed and uh, you'll see that there's an extra cable that's coming down here, auxiliary BEC. You see this wire? This. Cable management leaves a little something to be desired on this plane, folks. She's gonna get mad at me for that. <laughs> the cable management leaves a little something to be desired, but that's okay. I'm just gonna ram it in there and then hope we get it in the right spot. Okay, sorry, I couldn't resist. So 7006S, three straps. So let's just, let's just undo that one so we can slide. Yeah, let's loosen this one. 
Guys, if you, can, if you can slide these things free, that means they did it right, okay? A lot of these battery trays, they get glued, and then it's just such a pain to put batteries in, especially if you're using multiple sizes. That is a huge battery bay. Yeah, it is. Holy crap, that's a big pack and there's absolutely no problem. And by the way, look how much room there is. Look how much room there is from the lid. Yeah. That is awesome. Loving Not it. Not even a question. Not even close. Yeah, it's like way, way where it needs to be. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna, just real loosely kind of slip that around and leave that up so it's easy to grab. And then part of the reason we do the long format is because you guys have asked us to um, but then partly it's just kind of the way we film is the shotgun style filming. Um, so by the way, we wanted to make a mention, we wanted to make a shout out. Uh, we have, I think three people that have already started on the Patreon side. So thank you very much. We're pr privileged to have such an amazing audience. Um, we'll, I don't know if we're going to promise to do shout outs for everybody, but we'll probably try to do shout outs at some point just when it's appropriate. But we're really excited to see that people are willing to help support us. And we know that you guys have been asking forever and we've been very reluctant to do that just because we feel like it's a lot more equitable. If you guys wanna support us, the easiest way to do it is to just buy the planes that we're recommending. Um, you know, if you love this plane and you're gonna buy it anywhere, just buy it from our links and then you support us. You don't have to actually write us a check or send us money or any of that stuff. You just buy the airplane. And then these guys give us a small commission, which is really nice because then you're still supporting us indirectly, but you are supporting us. And it really works nicely that way because we love these things. We bring you a plethora of different choices, by the way. So like if you hate this plane when we bring it out, which I'd be amazed if you do, then, you know, maybe you love this one or maybe you love the F-16 or maybe you love the Aero Scout or you're brand new and you want the Sport Cub S UMX. Um, that'd be a great plane for a beginner. There's a million different ways or the Cessna Longitude. You know, it's, it's just, there's so many different choices out there. We want to bring you choice because we want to help you spend your RC dollars as, as smart as you can. Okay. Everybody is vying for your attention when it comes to spending money. And really we're, we're kind of no different in that way, but we want to help you to pick the best way that's going to make you the most happy. That's going to get you the most bang for your buck. Uh, because everybody has limited RC budgets. It doesn't look like we do, but we do. It's just that our budgets are different now because we work with these companies. So that being said, we love these airplanes. If we don't love them, you know it because we either tell you or you can tell because you know us. But the thing is, these planes are awesome and we want you to be able to use your RC budget wisely. We're going to help you do that. The other thing too is if part of your RC budget is helping to support Brian Phillips RC because you get something out of the videos, that's great and we really appreciate it. We're not going to try to twist your arm to say no, but at the same time, we really are humbled by the fact that people would support us with money in that way. So thank you very much. Um, okay, back to the point. We got the battery in here. It's strapped in. Oh, by the way, if you want to buy something that is not listed in our links, we have master links uh, kind of right below the Patreon link. And that will be to uh, Horizon Hobby, Big O Hobby, uh, Tower Hobbies. If you want something internationally shipped, go to Tower. If you're in Canada, you can go straight to Horizon. Um, for instance, we, we have a lot of it just down below, but you can go to the Horizon Hobby master link and you can buy anything on the website and you'll be supporting us a little bit, which is really nice. Um, okay, so canopy on, obviously we need that there. I'm gonna simulate plugging it in by taking and just kind of routing this cable. I'm not actually gonna plug it in yet. Okay, and one other thing you can do too is, if you're careful, you can, you can plug in just one half of the battery and then that'll kind of keep it where it's tame, but it's not actually terminated yet. Okay. All right, so it's plugged in. I think that it's like pretty much centered. So let's see how this goes. It's kind of a big plane. It's always challenging to test the big planes for CG. So I basically, I start with my fingers, the pads of my middle finger, because it's the longest finger on my hand. Some people have longer pointer finger if you're weird, but um, you put it on that back hole and then it'll lean forward. You put it in the front hole and it should lean back. And then if you kind of go in the middle somewhere, then you can tell approximately where the center of the center of gravity is. And you'll notice that it's kind of leaning forward a little bit. That's probably not a horrible place to start on a plane, but my experience tells me, which is not, it's not like vast experience, but I do have a lot of experience with the Viper that I want this thing to be tending toward tail heavy so I can flare nicely. 
So I'm actually gonna push it back quite a bit because big battery, big plane, you gotta move it a lot to, to make an impact, okay? So I've got it back. So we're right, there's like a, there's like a hole right here, you see? I'm gonna just kinda, you see, right there, yeah, you see? So we'll just push it there. And then I'm gonna pull this tight because now we're, we're getting fine tuned now. So let's see if that's right. And I hate to lose that strap position, but if you do a different battery configuration, you might actually need that strap still. Horizon's getting better about putting their straps in the right spot. Okay, so the back hole, ooh, that's pretty good. Front hole, tail heavy. I like it, that's where we're going. Okay, okay so on the back hole, on the back hole, it's balancing, which is nice. Now you'll notice I, I did that upside down. If you're not familiar with it, typically you do the CG test with the, with the wheels down, okay? The reason you do that is because if there's a shift in CG, you want the shift to be either in your favor so that when you're coming to land, sometimes landing gear go back. And so that'll shift your, your CG back. That's ideal on a plane like this because as you're flying, you may wanna go a little bit more nose heavy but then when you're landing, you want to go a little bit more tail heavy so you can flare. And, uh, you know, a lot of times your elevator just doesn't give you enough at slow flight on a fast flying jet if you're not tail heavy. Okay. Because your elevator becomes more effective to a degree if you're more tail heavy. It's more pitch sensitive because it's understable. Okay. When you have the weight forward, you're more nose heavy which makes you more stable, overstable, which makes the elevator have to work a little bit harder. That's because of where you're pivoting on the axis of the whole plane, okay? If you imagine it in a three-dimensional you know, plane, if it's nose heavy, it's gonna fall forward, okay? You want it to fall forward, that's what you want it to do. If it falls flat, then that's, that's great too. If it falls backward, then you're gonna be, this thing is, is super effective at that rate, so. All right, so the canopy comes off super nice. It seats really, really nice. You see, I didn't have to use any hand. That's very nice. A lot of times you don't have that, but both of these Vipers are very good. In fact, this one's probably got a little bit more slop than I'd like to see. I'd like to see it a little bit tighter like that. Okay, that could be fixed. I could build up a little bit on that front, but love the lines on there. The canopy is really well cut. We didn't talk about that earlier. Man, that pilot is, I kind of wish he didn't have a mustache, but uh, the mustache is like truly 70s. He does look like he's got some eye issues going on. Let's show him from the front. <laughs> does he look a little bug-eyed to you? He's a little. Oh. He's, a little he's a little bug-eyed. He doesn't look like he's got the Pinocchio effect going on. No. He's got I think it's pretty sweet. I like it. It's awesome. Okay, great. So, had some strings hanging off of that LED cover, but I can live with that. No big deal. Love the way this is together. We are ready. We're gonna come right back and do the radio setup finally. We're gonna do the radio setup on the NX8 for this Viper 90 millimeter EDF. Really excited. All right, come on over camera crew. So we're on page six of the manual. This is where they kind of refer to the computerized transmitter setup. I sometimes call them pro programmable transmitters. Um, forgive me if that's not correct, but that's what I call them. So. There's also gonna be reverse thrust and AS3X slash safe setup. So we are gonna set up all the setup that can be set up um, that's sort of like factory recommended. So if you don't want part of this, then you can just skip past it. Um, I know a lot of you guys come to the build, the unbox build and radio setup for the radio setup specifically. And I would highly encourage you, don't just download the profiles, okay? Don't do that, learn to use this tool. It's a very expensive tool. It should be intimately familiar to you as a pilot because as you use it, you're gonna get better with it. You're gonna get more comfortable. And then when you're doing a plane that's not a bind and fly, you'll have an easier time. So it's very easy to do it on a bind and fly. All right, so without further ado, I'm into my uh, test AR631. So I'm gonna click and then scroll down to system setup. Now you can also use these two buttons together and it'll bring you right to the model select, but I can't show you the model select. So we'll do this, add new model, and then it brings up create a new model. Sorry, we have to do that because some of the stuff we're doing can't be released yet. This is an acro. If you were to make a heli or something like that, you would just scroll through, okay? So acro, create. Takes a second sometimes. Okay, then 
This is the model type, that's what we just set. If you change that, it's going to clear your model. Then the model name, this is where they changed. So you scroll from the back down to this. You click and then you have to scroll. And then if you hold FN, you can go up and down. Otherwise you'd be scrolling all the way through like this, which is what we did on the first model. Okay, so then you have to scroll, whoops. See how it went to one, whoops. Oh, dang it. See, this is why I'm not a crazy fan of this because it takes a lot of getting used to. So that was 45. So that means I have 45 models on my transmitter. It's crazy. I know how it is, isn't, isn't it? Okay, so then you can click all the way over and then once you highlight the correct one, you can start typing. One very nice feature that they added is insert. That inserts a space which can then be corrected into whatever value you want. It does not change the way that you um, cursor like it would on a regular computer. That would go from, you know, right, 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 right. It would go from that to right, 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 right. That's not what's happening. It just adds a space. Okay, without further ado, we're gonna type in the name. So this is the Viper. So I am going to scroll over to the capital V, FN down, click, and there you have it. Then the down makes it go to the lowercase. And if you need a special character, you can click in here or you can click to go back. So now that we've showed that real quick, we'll go ahead and type this in and come right back. So once you've got everything typed in, then you can just press back and it'll beep like that sometimes, but it doesn't seem to have any impact. Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to look at this. You're going to find the one that you have. I have an NX-8, so it's this section. So system setup, model utilities, aircraft type, model, uh, model type airplane, which we already did, aircraft type. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do next, aircraft type. And then I wanna go from normal to one aileron, one flap. And guys, this will be the time when I stop and talk about how great the AR637T and the AR631 or 630, if you don't want an antenna, they are awesome. Because when you set up your wing type, you go into forward programming and then you assign it to turn on AS3X and it does it no matter how you set up your wing. That is so huge. On the DX18, before forward programming with an AR636, it was a gigantic nightmare to do all that stuff. There was lots of mixing involved or you most definitely had to have it hooked up to your computer to set up all the AS3X and or save profiles. You had to set all sorts of gains and all this stuff in this ambiguous fashion on the computer instead of in the airplane. And now it's so much easier. The forward programming is a game changer. I'm serious, it's a game changer. If you're dependent on safe, which first of all, get independent of safe, first of all. Second of all, if you are, in, if you are needing it, it opens up the possibility to all sorts of models. Um, this model, if you need safe, you need to practice. I would not recommend buying this if you need safe. That being said, if you need safe on the 70, it's probably more appropriate, but even still, the F-15 would be a better starting point. The Habu would be the best starting point. Just out flying the other day with my son, 4S on that plane is amazing. Super good trainer. He was flying out of safe the whole time. Now, AS3X is still an aid. Everybody knows that, but stabilization is a whole lot different than auto leveling, even though everything on safe operates on the basis of AS3X, it is a big factor. So I just want you guys to be aware, if you're flying in safe, work hard to get done with that. That stage of flying is very frustrating. It's hard and you make mistakes that you wouldn't otherwise make and you probably don't even realize it, but when you pull back on the stick and it only goes like this high and you need to go this high, then that means you crashed into a tree. I remember, I had sticks of shame that I would use to get planes out of trees. I almost never end up in trees anymore. I do crash. Usually the crashes come upon landing. Rough landing, a little bit early, miss a runway, stop too short, run off the end of the runway. Those are the types of things that I'm struggling with now as I advance at my, what, like six years into this. So I almost never hit trees, almost never hit obstructions. I do occasionally, um, but it's, it's less often. Okay, now the types of things I run into are different, like the ground. <laughs> All right, so continuing in the aircraft type, the wing type is one aileron, one flap. But Brian, there's two flaps and two ailerons. Yes, we've gone over this. There's one channel that controls and commands those. The thing that is so awesome about forward programming is when you have two 
like this or like that. It is so much better. I mean, night and day easier to set up Crow, for instance, because then the AS3X works with it. Otherwise, before you would have to do all sorts of creative tricks to make it work. Yeah, correct? they're not tricking it into working. Yep, it just actually works. works. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's this part here. One aileron, one flap. I don't know why the flap is in Princess. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so then we're going to go to next. We're going to go over to this picture, which is totally unnecessary, but I like to set this image. One thing, Horizon, if you're listening, I'm sure you're not on this. Um, I would like to see some updated pictures in here. Can we get some updated pictures? Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are, if they are. Um, my guess is you probably already have like every bind and fly plane has a picture that goes with it. Now I know if you get an IX-12 or an IX-20, you can take a picture because there's literally a camera on it because it has an Android smartphone essentially built mm -hmm. in. I don't think there's a SIM card though. I don't know, you might be able to add a SIM card. Uh, that's not a very good picture for this, is it? I thought there was one that was closer. Might be the best one though. Yeah, the Habu. Okay, looks good. All right, so we'll walk out of here. Now, the other thing too is I noticed that if you're setting up an AR637T as opposed to an AR637TA, I've noticed that in order to associate your flight modes within safe and or AS3X, you may actually have to set up a flight mode. So that's something, and also you need that flight mode associated to the proper channel so that it can be seen by the receiver. Otherwise, when you make a change, the change in state does not actually reflect when you change your switch. So just be aware of that if you're learning the new system like everybody else, because we're all learning it right now. That's one thing to keep an eye out for. All right, so what's next? Uh, looks like we got to do uh, channel assign, um, default switch assignments for a new model setup, gear channel five, switch A, that's the default. I don't know why they talk about that. And they're suggesting D for flaps, okay? I'm not gonna use D. So at some point we're gonna have to switch channels and I'll show you why. Okay, so they do they talk about the time? How long they want? Oh, uh, it would be, go back a page. Oh, there's a battery selection. More. 3.5 minutes. Yep. And that's with whatever they suggest. So I think they suggest 4,000 through 7,000. So if we're at the top end, three and a half might be a little bit short, but who knows? I do respect timers on jets and I recommend you do the same. Throttle cut, we'll set that up real quick. Switch H for me. Verify it's, well, that's weird. Switch H, accept the input. Okay, so it's working and then it stops. That's what I want. I'll walk back, then I'm gonna do dual rates and expo after we do timer. Well, we gotta do flops too. So this is where you set up to three, three minutes and 30, one out active, next, next. At one minute, I want no warning. At 30 seconds, I want no warning. At 20 seconds, I want no warning. At this, I want countdown. At expiration, I want tone and vibrate. Maybe on this one, one minute would be kind of nice. It's only like two and a half minutes in though. I know. Maybe the first time just. Nah, let's just not. Well, we're gonna have full telemetry. Yeah, we do have full telemetry. So we can set up an audio event too. Yeah. You can't yet because it has right. to do the auto config first. So we can do flap system. I wanna set this to B, that's what I use. Then I'm gonna do flaps per the manual 100. And then there's negative elevator correction on this one. Sweet. The other day we just set up a similar plane to the Habu and I had negative elevator correction on that too, mm -hmm. which is just very uncommon. Now the speed with the new firmware updates a little bit different, set it to two and you don't need to flip the switch to change it. It's just the way it should be. Okay, you can see the elevator correction, you can see the flaps moving, and you can see auxiliary two moving. Why is that moving, Brian? Because auxiliary two is attached to B by default. So I have to unattach that or not worry about it and not use it for something else. But if I wanna use it for something else, I'm gonna have to unassign it. No big deal. 
Switch D is not assigned to anything. So if I try to use this for safe, which I will, because this is gonna be used for retracts, then I need to reassign this to that. So let's do that now, actually. Let's talk about that. We're going to system setup, disconnect RF, scroll down to channel assign. So now instead of auxiliary two being attached to B, I'm going to click and put it to D. Then we're done. Then we walk back out, we go into monitor mode. Look, D moves auxiliary two. But now flaps just moves flaps and elevator because they're mixed. Okay, so that's great. So we got that in the closed position. C is not attached to anything, D is attached to that, E is attached to nothing, and then this is attached to what will be R, nothing here, throttle cut there, and then auxiliary three. Does that all make sense? Hopefully mm -hmm. it does. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're- Did you test gear? Or I mean- Gear? Yeah, yep. okay. gear's there, sorry. So I have the gear in the retracted position because look where the plane is. Look under here. The gear door is here. So I always make sure on a plane stand to be super careful that my landing gear are not gonna bind when I turn on the plane. Now E-Flight's really good about having them not cycle right away, but some of the cheaper brands will just, just go right away. Yeah. So typically I always encourage people, cycle your gear once when you first turn on the, the power to the, to the plane. It's, it's a good habit to get into because then if you have a sequencer for gear door, they will sequence through an entire sequence and then close or open, whichever direction it was. And if you store a plane with the gear closed, I do store a lot of my jets with the gear down because they're sitting on the ground right now. But once I get ready to start stowing them in the wall on forks or whatever you wanna call those things, things that stick out from the wall, then I'll have the gear usually collapsed when they're stored. It does kind of make for a pain in the butt when you take them out to fly because then you have to energize them with the battery. So I usually have to get a plane stand out to do that. So it's kind of a pain. If you can leave your gear down, it's really nice. All right, so getting back to the point, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about dual rates and expo now. So click, scroll down to dual rates and expo. There's three control axes. So we're gonna start with ailerons. I'm gonna set it to my standard five, 10, 20. And then at 20, we're gonna lower this down to 90. So we're full rates, full rates, 90. And we're five for expo, 10, then 20. So you'll notice it's a doubling effect. It's half or double. I start in the middle. That's the way I like it. Okay. So five, 10, 20, whoops. And then down to 90. Now, if you look over here, it's showing the aileron expo to a high rate and a low rate, okay? For aileron, elevator, and rudder. So it's a lot like what I'm doing. The difference is I don't usually get to the low rates. I don't almost, I don't even mess with them most of the time. Okay, so here's five, here's 10, and here's 20. Now there's nothing wrong with the way that Horizon suggests doing this. And there are occasions where I like their stuff better, but it's extremely rare. So I just do it my way. And then if you guys, this is a highly subjective screen. Dual rates and expo is highly subjective, okay? Just like stabilizers are highly subjective. The, the deeper you get into this hobby, the more people you're gonna find out that hate stabilizers. I don't really understand it, but there are people that hate stabilizers, fine. Then you don't have to use them. Exactly. But there's a lot of people that think that it's like child's play. And I'm like, yeah, no, I like the way they fly better because I've flown with them without stabilizers. And I just, I just like the locked in feel that stabilizers give. Um, okay, so, and it, it does add cost to planes. Make no mistake about it. But you got a big enough plane, you really don't need a stabilizer. Like the three meter Fox does not need a stabilizer. Okay, some people that are doing uh, thermaling hate stabilizers because the stabilizers, when you have a wing lift because you hit the edge of a thermal range, then you won't see that. It will actually take that out, so. You may want to have a setting when you're setting up your AR 637TA, no stabilization, auto leveling and stabilization. That's the way I do it. Okay, so getting back to the point, it looks like the servo travel to throttle cut to minus 100. Okay, so it looks like everything is already set. The only thing we haven't set up is reverse thrust, which we'll do after we get everything bound because you do have to do that through 
the, it's, it's not forward programming, it's just like weird text-based communication that you do when you first start up the machine, but we're gonna do that after a minute, okay? And we'll just make sure it's not already set up as well. Okay, so we have the timer, it's working. We have the throttle cuts working. I'm just basically over here in my menu, verifying the throttle cuts good, verifying my flaps are in the collapse position, verifying all of the rest of the stuff is where I want it in the event of a complete disconnect of radio because I'm setting my fail safe at bind, okay? So that's why I want to have everything right. Okay, so now that the radio system's off, we are going to actually bind this plane. Now binding this plane should be quite easy. We have the 7006S in here. Um, I used, I feel like this is a good starting point. Now I'm gonna grab a marker and I'm gonna go ahead and mark what we're putting in it and where we put it initially. Okay. Now we have been burned by this before by marking things prematurely, but generally speaking, if we mark it and it flies good, then we have a starting point. We have a basis, okay? So this seven amp hour and that's uh, 6S, 30C, and the wires go that way, okay? And just get in the habit of marking your planes because when you only have one, you think you'll never forget what battery it uses, but. But then when you have like, like 200, 100. you'll think, oh yeah, how could I forget? Now you'll remember this is a 6S plane, until you start flying 8S packs. And then you'll ask your wife what kind of battery it uses and she'll have no idea. And, then and you'll be annoyed? Yeah. Start throwing totally pizza know. boxes. <laughs> Don't be like that guy. <laughs> there was no pizza boxes armed in the filming of this video. And you did buy me pizza. I did. She wanted pizza. You she wanted Casey's pizza. pizza. Nobody knows what Casey's pizza is. Whatever, so there's plenty of people. The Midwest. the Midwest is a big place. It's where Horizon is. Okay, so this plane is level and true. My transmitter is off. The canopy is in a safe spot. My gear are going to clear, verified. And here goes nothing. Oh, those lights are super bright, love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna press this button and hold it. Then it's gonna start flashing. I'm gonna come over here and press this button and then press the power button. Binding. Ah, it's so annoying. Okay, so sometimes the bind fails. It seems like I'm always too close anymore. So I shut off my transmitter. Now I'm gonna press and hold the binding button again and then press the power button. I'm further away. Binding. Bind failed. Okay, so again, also annoying. What you have to do sometimes is you have to get farther away. This is one of the drawbacks of a momentary push button for a power button. Okay, so now I'm trying to bind again. Now, as soon as that's done, you can let go. Well, you can actually let go at the beginning. Now, you saw the two dances. I don't know if you saw or if you heard, but it, it didn't do the auto config. Elevators going up and down. Ailerons are rolling as expected. Not very much because we're in safe, I believe. Flaps go down, flaps go down. Let's check the gear. Gear are down. Oh, they are awesome too. Look at this, awesome. That is so good, look at this. Oh yeah, all three of them are like that. Okay, notice this switch is up. I want that switched. I'm gonna click, go down to servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse, switch the gear, okay? Oh yeah, that looks great. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Loving it. Elevator, rudder, steerable nose gear, everything's working. Okay, so now, now that we have all that stuff done, we don't see any AS3X because it's not moving, so I'm going to move it. I'm gonna actually put this on, and I'm gonna move it. Safe is working. How do you know? I'm trying to find the quickest path to level. 
It does think that's level, which is not quite level, but that's okay. It's definitely in safe. How do we change that? First of all, make sure your gear door don't get covered. They're not. So I have to make an assignment for safe because this is safe select with an Air 637TA. This is where I want safe assigned. Throttle cuts on, down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. See how it's changing? You can go more, you just gotta go at least enough to initiate it. So now safe is on or off, okay? Here's another trick you can do to see if you're in safe. Safe is off, safe is on because there's more throws out of safe. Okay, so I am currently in safe. And here's how you can double verify. The same thing you did earlier. Finding the quickest path to level, okay? That's the auto leveling. So I don't want this switch up for safe. I want this switch. I want safe there, okay? So how do you do that? Go to servo setup, click the function list, go to servo setup, go to travel, Scroll over to reverse, and we're on auxiliary two. You can look and see what's changing, and then there you go. Now it's backward. Okay, so walking out of the menu, elevator up, elevator down, rudder left, right, roll. That's a lot more throw, and they're safe. See? Also, you see the mix on the rudder. In safe, you're gonna tend to have a mix between ailerons and rudder to help coordinate turns for an inexperienced pilot, okay? So everything is working, they're working in the right directions, roll left, roll right, pull up, pull down, yaw left, yaw right, everything's working, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, and reverse correction should be felt. Can't see it. Looks like my elevators are fairly close. Look at my control surfaces here. Feels like this one's close. This one's pretty good. The flap is good. This flap is good. That one seems like, seems like there's a disparity here, but it mm -hmm. feels good over there. Show them that. Yeah. So I think we're good enough. Now, that being said, on certain aircraft, there's certain strange nuances that you have to pay attention to. I'm thinking of, for instance, the F-18. The 80 millimeter F-18, one of the, uh, the full functioning uh, was it Telvons? Not Telvons. Telvator. Um, it was tied together. Otherwise, it would have been Telvons. Um, they need to be down like three degrees or something like that from this mark. So, or three millimeters or something like that. Make sure you check the manual if you're curious. This one didn't have anything weird that we saw. So also, I noticed this is not flashing, which could be confused with this light. So it'd be nice to see that flash. I'm not sure if there's a way to change that. If there's a way to change that, it'd be pretty sweet. Also, this one is white. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna get confused. I think it's good because you can see it. I like solid lights in general, but I don't like solid lights where they should be anti-crash beacons flashing. The reason I like flashing lights is because flashing lights help me to designate between navigation lights, which are true navigation lights. By the way, I'm standing here and I can see that red light. I like that. I like, I mean, it's, it's subtle, but I can see it. Mm -hmm. Also, those white lights have a really wide range. That's really good. When you're flying in for a landing, you're gonna have one, two, and three white lights to line up. And guess what? This one's just ahead of the straight. So you're gonna have a very good effect to help you tell how much you're flared. And it's gonna help you figure out what direction you're going. I love that, really cool detail. Also, if you're wondering, um, afterburners, afterburner lights are really helpful for orientation if you do a lot of night flying. So, not that this one has it, it doesn't. Okay, are you ready to try power? Yeah. Okay, because we have to do thrust reverse next. Because we have safe select set up, we have all the control surfaces working, and then I'm not sure this one might go through it. If it doesn't, I'll show you exactly how to set up the thrust reverse. It's quite easy, but it does, it's a little bit weird. Something new for us. Okay, so here we go. I want to hold this thing because I don't want it to damage itself, okay? Throttle cuts off. Ooh. That's 25%. There's 50. That's 100. Wow, <laughs> that's powerful. I'm loving it.
Okay, AS3X has come alive as expected. Okay, time to see if she'll float. Time to see. This is, this is what I wanted to try. Oh man, I love doing this with planes when it works. That is awesome. Okay, so yes. That is so cool. So, that is why 90 millimeters is sweet. And by the way, look at the fan. The fan looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Absolutely gorgeous. And then look at the inlets. Oh yes, that looks so good. Yeah. That is so cool. All right, so I'm very satisfied with that test. It satisfied my uh, curiosity and it also helped me to understand that this thing is gonna be powerful. It's gonna get off the ground quickly. Obviously it's a bigger plane, it's heavier, but it's got a lot of wing. The wing loading will be low. It's gonna fly well, I'm excited for this. Now, let's set up thrust reverse. Why do we need thrust reverse, camera crew? Because it's fun, no. Because it Besides slows the plane that. down. Yes. Okay, so we need to talk about this for a minute. The Draco had thrust reverse, and we put the thrust reverse here, correct? Yeah, I think so. So I have to think through this for a second. I need a switch that I can get to easily. It's gonna be an unusual switch for me. Mm. I might be able to use this switch mm -hmm. because I can still get to that in flight. The problem is, okay, so I got my full landing flaps on. I've got my gear coming down. I'm coming in for a landing. So what I could do is I could set up so that like the thrust reverse only works in certain conditions, but let's just get it working first and then I can mix that in. Okay, so throttle cuts on. It's tested, okay? So the first thing you have to do is you have to program it unless there's already something doing it. Now, the way I'm gonna test for this is I am going to, oh, then there's also telemetry. We were talking about voltage alarms. Mm -hmm. So you can set up a voltage alarm. Uh, still waiting for the percentage horizon. Okay, look at that. You've got each cell, You've got the temperature of the battery got the AS3X heading, got everything. This is so cool. There you go. That's how you enter setup, okay? But you have to do it within, what, like five seconds or something like that yeah. to get in there? So let's just do that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse my flaps, but I'm gonna leave my gear down. Okay, so first thing you do, de-energize this. Do you remember this. what you're doing? Like, you read the directions. It says enter setup, step one, hold, um, hold five to 10 seconds. Well, it's gonna come on. Okay, so you ready? Now look. Step one, hold five to low throttle up elevator. That's step one, low throttle. Okay, step two. Up, elevator, right, aileron for five to 10 seconds. Okay, so now we're in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so brake is disabled and you use this stick to move up and down. Brake force, cutoff type. Cutoff volts, 3.4. BEC voltage, see that's what I was talking about. That BEC can be changed there. I would not recommend doing it. Startup time is soft. Timing is 15. You can change the direction of rotation. I'm trying to remember where it is. Air, air time, 45 seconds. Restart, Excel, thrust reverse, channel seven. Okay, Is so channel the... seven would be, wait, channel seven would be, did I already set it up? You have to do the braking. This is channel eight. Do you have to do the braking thing? Is it... Let's try it. Okay, so channel seven should be, I'll have to enter back from, re, from reboot. So this is channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So auxiliary two. Oh, so that might make it go reverse. So 
We have to change that to auxiliary. We have to change it to auxiliary, um, the eighth channel. Okay, so it's not gonna work right now. Oh, maybe it will. Are we still in there? Oh, we still are, sweet. So we're gonna change this. I think you just move that. Is that how you do that? I can't remember what you do. Oh, there you go, so it's now it's channel eight. So exit with save. Okay, so now we're exiting. Now it's rebooting the, the ESC. So we're gonna let it all initiate. Now watch for the two dances. Must have already danced. Yeah, I think we're okay yeah, on that. Yeah. Okay, so now we can walk out of this menu by scrolling all the way back over, go to monitor mode, and now auxiliary three is here. So that's gonna dictate our throttle. So obviously that's not an appropriate thing for reverse. So I'm gonna change it to, I guess for now, I'm gonna go to like switch G. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go make an assignment in system setup, disconnect RF, yes, channel assign, right knob. We're gonna change that to switch G. Okay, now I don't know what direction it needs to be. We're gonna find out right now. Don't worry about that. You can clear it by pressing the back button. It's giving us a warning at startup. The warning is only gonna come at startup for a low flight pack, meaning it's not at full voltage, okay? There's a threshold and you can change that yourself if you'd like. Okay, so, okay, so sorry, our camera stopped for a second. So throttle hold is on. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna give it regular throttle. See our toilet paper unrolling? Okay, so it's obviously not blowing back at me. Now watch this. All the way down. So it's still forward. Okay, so I wanna show you something. You see how this is minus 100? Now it's plus 100 and that's minus 100. But it's still going forward, okay? So I wanna just look at the manual for just a quick second and see if it has anything to say. Now I'm gonna try safe just for grins real quick, okay? So safe is the other channel. Definitely still sucking air. That's crazy. Definitely still sucking air. No change in state. Okay, so it's not acting like the braking is turning on. So now let's look at this for just a second. It might talk about braking, or not braking, but thrust reverse. I know for a fact you can do it, I just don't. Just oh, that was the addendum. Yep, okay. it's on that page. Yeah, it isn't t talking about reverse in there, did it? Nope. Okay, so different language. Just verifying we don't see anything really helpful. Okay, so we're gonna pause and we will let you know what it was when we come right back. Okay, so we're just gonna start again and we'll show you exactly what I think I did wrong. Okay, so just because you have a channel assigned for reversing does not mean reversing is on, okay? I think that's what was wrong. Okay, so plug your battery in and then within the first few seconds, scroll all the way over. Okay, hold this up elevator and left aileron for one to, for, for five to 10 seconds, and then right aileron. Okay, now we're in it. So the brake is, dis, the brake type is disabled. Normal, proportional, reverse. That's what we didn't turn on. Okay, then we can walk down here. Just looking at the settings as we go to make sure something didn't go like nuts on us. So now it's on channel eight still. So it did save our changes from earlier, okay? And then walk out. Cool. You could probably enter again right now because it's just booting, but the key is you have to do it within so many seconds or it then ignores that command because it's not possible you could be in that condition during a flight. Right. Okay, so it's a safety feature and it's a good safety feature. Oh, by the way, we didn't really show them inside of here, but there is a servo that runs this nose gear. Let's show them real quick. Look at this. Oh, that's cool. Okay, 
Sorry, it's trying to like not focus. Okay, here we go, gear. Wait. Ah, it's not a servo, it's just a spring, guys. <laughs> okay. Whatever the case is, keep it simple, stupid, right? Don't drop your plane because of that. So we have everything technically set up. Let's check our reverse thrust now. Reverse thrust should be attached to this. I don't know what direction's what, but uh, I wanna also just be on the safe side. You don't want anything to suck into the uh, inlet because you're getting into some pretty powerful suckers. <laughs> okay, so that's blown at me now. Oh yeah, look back there, nothing. See how fast it switches? That is cool. Okay, so that's normal flight mode. That's thrust reverse. Throttle holds on. I want to switch it right now. So click to servo setup, travel, scroll to reverse, and flip it. Now, I want to check something too. I want to see what's going on. Throttle cuts off. There's forward. There's reverse and reverse. There's forward, reverse, and reverse. You see how that could be a bit of a problem? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I want it only to be reverse here, okay? Now the other thing is it would be kind of cool if I had to have my full landing flaps deployed before the reverse would happen. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna take off backward. I'm not gonna do that, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Uh, so go to mixing, let's just make a new mix. It could be normal, I think. And then all we want to do is we just want to tie it to switch. Input is going to be this switch, maybe? Auxiliary two? That's, oh wait, yeah, that's auxiliary three. No, do we want it to be auxiliary three? Yeah, auxiliary three to auxiliary three. Okay, so then this is where you're going to be like, okay, I want it to do something upon something. Okay, so in the middle setting, I don't want it to be zero. I want it to see how it's minus 100 or it's plus 100. Plus 100 is evidently what makes the reverse work or actually anything that's not minus 100, something like that. There's somewhere zero is close enough. So when you move the offset, you'll see nothing happens, right? See, nothing. That's because there's no rate attached to it. So let's do 100 and then let's look at one of these. So you see how it's walking? It's walking to one extent. I really don't care what the, what the number is. I just play with them until it works. Okay, so it goes 150 or it's minus 100. So in this condition, it's 150. So let's see what happens. Throttle cuts off. So throttle's going forward, then it's reverse. Remember, this is not the amplitude of throttle. It is the simply whether or not it's going forward or backward, okay? So we um, kind of did that and it didn't work, okay? So forward. Okay, I know what I need to do. Throttle cuts on. So now I need this to actually go the other way. So I want the other one to go to 100. It might be a minus 100 on this one too. Actually, that's what we'll do. Let's go to minus 100. So really when we're in this setting, you see how it's just staying as though it were in the first setting. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now no change, no change. And then this one's going to be all the way up. It's just not going to change now. So I got to probably do this other setting here. Is it changing yet? Nope. We just got to set this one to a hundred and set that one to zero. Okay. So now it's middle. Now it's 100. Well, that's pretty useless. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna play with this and come right back. Okay, so this is what I was trying to do and I'll show you exactly what to do now. Okay, with, with my switch in the neutral position, we have forward thrust. In the middle position, there's no change in state. All the way forward and it goes to thrust reverse. Okay, so let's show you now. This is how I did it. It's quite simple. You go to mix one, so I'll, you go to 
mix one. I'm gonna mix auxiliary three to auxiliary three with uh, basically there's, I assigned the switch position to also to G, okay? So once you set it to G, then you go over and highlight the middle. And so that's the only time where you actually have a change in state, okay? So the rate is zero and then minus 100 and 100. So what happens is when you're in that middle position, there's basically no change in state, you see? So the middle is just like it was down all the way, okay? Then when you're in top position, it goes to plus 100. You guys see? No change, no change. So it's like it's in the same position here. It's like it's in the same position, then it's all the way. So it's treating a three position like a two position. So that's how I did that. Now you wouldn't have to do it that way, that's just the way I decided to do it. Also throttle cut doesn't have any impact on that. So the only thing I was thinking about doing was maybe tying the flaps also to that condition so that if the flaps are in the landing flap position, it's allowed to go into thrust reverse. Otherwise it just doesn't, okay? But I don't want thrust reverse with landing flaps because I may still need to get down to the runway. So coming in for landing, just thinking this through, you got your throttle cut off, you're up in the air, you've got your flaps deployed, everything's going hunky-dory. You can see we've got a positive thrust coming in. We're kind of like ready to start gliding. We're getting into a flare, we come into the flare. We put the thrust reverse on while we're flaring for our final. And then as soon as you touch down, you can throttle it up, which is pretty cool. Now, the other thing I thought about doing was also mixing a throttle to that condition so that it just full throttle. But I'm a little bit nervous about that. Hmm. Or maybe mixing this knob so that you could set whatever you want that full thrust configuration to be upon completion of the switch. So when you put the switch on, it automatically goes to full thrust. So the reason I don't like that is because when I'm landing, I may need to get to thrust. So I'm ready to go into full thrust. The other thing I could do is I could set that middle to controllable, and then I could set this to just stop me right now. So not sure, we'll see how it works. I've got the Draco, I've had some practice. The problem is my practice is over here. Yeah. Guys, you gotta try to keep the switches in the same position if you possibly can. But some planes are a little bit different. You're gonna need different switches for different functions. So just remember, at the end of the day, you're the one that's flying it, not the manual, not Horizon, not E-Flight, not Brian Phillips, unless you're me, which I am. So, and if you wanna fly your planes, that's fine. I'll fly them when we're together. So that being said, love this plane. Super, super excited to see how well it does in the air. I'm sure you guys have already seen it. Obviously, if you didn't already know by now, this thing is great. You're gonna to wanna to buy it from the links below. The links below in the description also include a link to our new Patreon site. Uh, we really appreciate your support that way. We have also, just so you guys know, we don't show any advantages for the tiers because really this is just an outlet for you guys to uh, be able to support us. And that also helps with taxes because otherwise some of the overseas countries are gonna to have to pay sales tax on that Patreon support, which is just ludicrous if you ask me. So for the moment, that's what we're doing. As soon as we show benefits, then we have to assign values and it's like, oh my goodness, what a pain in the butt. You guys wanna support us, you can support us through Patreon. We're also gonna start a PayPal account soon for people that wanna just do one-time donations. Um, Patreon, of course, is monthly. So we really appreciate all of you guys um, giving us all the support you already do. Definitely uh, like the videos, that helps a lot. Our long format penalizes us big time on YouTube because our audience retention rate is low. People watch the flight, then they click away and go do something else, which is fine, and we have no problem with that. The problem is YouTube does. They think we suck because of that, because we put up a three-hour video and only watch five minutes of it. We don't actually care if you watch five minutes of it. It's just that realize that we do get penalized for that. Um, audience retention is one of the biggest factors that YouTube uses to determine whether or not you actually like the video. So please give us a like it will help to make up for some of that that's just built into the mix of the way we do things and the shotgun filming style takes more time than other videos. So then also, don't forget to click the bell for notifications. We always have new content coming out. We do a lot of content and we want you guys to be able to see it. Um, even if it's just one of those where you watch the flights and then you click away and you click the like button and everybody's happy. But if you see something you like, like this Viper Jet, this 90, the best way you can support us that's the most economical for you as a viewer and for us as content creators is to just buy the stuff from our links. 
even if you're going down to our Amazon link and you're buying your groceries for the week, you will help support us in that way and then you don't pay us directly, Amazon pays us. So it's really cool, it's an easy way to help support us and then you guys keep us on the air. So we really appreciate you. The NX8 has been great. We love the 7,000 milliamp hour 6S pack for these big planes. Get you good flight time. This thing is huge. You got plenty of room in there. You could do dual 5,000s, but I just don't want to fiddle with two packs if I can do one and be happy. I'm hoping that our flight times are good, but we have one more thing we haven't talked about and that is audio events for warnings. Let's talk about that for a minute. And you know what I'm gonna do that's a smart thing to do? Get a calculator. You're right, Yay. I'm gonna get a calculator. We never get calculators and we always <laughs> do the math wrong. Okay, so let's look at this guys. We got a 6S pack. Looking at a calculator, six times 3.3 would be 19.8 volts. Okay, now you don't have to set it to 19.8 and you can set it per cell. Click, scroll down to audio events. Audio events can be based on flight modes, center tones, generic reports, all this stuff. Generic reports are not a warning, they're generic reports. Telemetry warnings happen based on one of the telemetry items. You can also update this by clicking auto config. It's gonna change whatever it was set up to, which was auto config to what it should be by default. Battery, smart battery. Okay, so click it twice. You can have a alarm that is attached to the per cell. Imbalance cell, don't really wanna do that. Tone is different than vibrate, which is different than tone and vibrate. And you can't do voice on this, okay? So that's gonna be a very irregular tone. You're not gonna know what you're listening to. Smart ESC, I'm gonna make one that says volts. Active, I want to have the volts minimum set to, you see how it says 1S down here? I'm gonna set that to 6S, and then it automatically defaults to 18. So just so you know, I want 19.8, but what would 18 uh, divided by six would only be three volts. That's gonna be like you're crashing already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanna set that to more like 20, right? So 19.8 is what I want. And I want the alarm to be voice. And I want the max voltage I don't care about. Whatever. If it's high, great. Status report. See how it says 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds. So you can set that to be every 60 seconds, which would only give you a couple of warnings, but she will interrupt you at the worst possible time, I guarantee mm -hmm. it. So warning reports are only going to be, <sighs> 10 seconds is a long time, but she talks slow. Let's do 15 seconds. Yeah. So what's gonna happen is upon the voice alarm, meaning that we are at or below 19.8, it's going to alarm. Here's the big trade-off. You see this? Smart battery alarm, battery not charged for flying. That's when you come out of the menu. It's as though you went through a startup sequence. That's why it does it there. But you see, if you scroll over here, you can see our voltage. We're at 24 volts. If that were to drop to 19.7, then it would alarm. But you need to be aware that there is a screen that comes up. So if you're depending on your screen at that time, you won't be able to see it. So use the alarms carefully. They can be your worst enemy. That's why I set it to 15 second status updates after the alarm. Status updates, not alarm updates. I said status, but I meant alarm. The, the alarm status is going to update me every 15 seconds after I reach that level. So once I reach that level and then I go up back above, let's say that I'm at really high load and I'm in you know, like a vertical takeoff and then I you know, bring it back down and then flip over and fly. If I drop down to 18 volts for like one second, it's gonna give me status alarms all the way until the moment I land for every 15 seconds. Mm. So you need to be aware of that. If you have a longer flight time on say a prop driven plane and you drop down and then you relax your throttle and you get out of it and you relax and then that voltage builds back up like happens on lipos, then you're gonna be listening to that alarm. So something to keep in mind. It's very easy to think about that now, but once you're up in the air and she's jabbering, and distracting you, it could lead you to crash. 
So, I mean, hopefully you're not that bad of, badly distracted um, as you are more advanced pilot adding warnings like this. All right, cool. This thing is ready to fly basically. Those are some rock hard tires. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the trailing, e, the trailing links are going to be good to help make up for that. Mm. If not, I'll be switching those out for some squishy tires. Mm -hmm. They look good though. Oh, and then these have, uh, this one does not have bearings, it do, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think that's just plastic, which is good because I really don't want bearings on there. On the mains, yes, because you, once you roll and you're getting ready to fly, then you don't want any resistance on the back wheels. But on the front wheel, I'd actually kind of like a brake, to be honest. This is gonna be sweet. I can't wait to try it, guys. We already talked about a million different ways you can support us, so you can rewind if you don't remember, but mostly just look at the description below. There's about seven or eight ways at the top, and then scroll a little bit further and you can see whatever plane you wanna see. But we always put the current plane that's in the video at the very top, and we'll put the components that were used in the video right up at the top so you don't have to search for it. We really appreciate you. Best audience in YouTube history right here on Brian Phillips RC. Come back for more.